Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and here I have the new Nokia X6. This has only just been launched and we're just going to do a quick unbox for you and a tour around the handset uh, before we actually do our full written review which will be on site. So let's take a look in the box. And first and foremost on top we have comes with music and an activation code and a small CD-ROM which is the, the comes with music software. Then we have the handset itself on top. This is the white and blue model. Uh, there is also a black and red model available. But we're going to look at that in a bit more detail in just a second. Also in the box, we have mains charger, which is the typical Nokia, uh, very small bullet style connector there, and a three pin UK plug as your charger. That. Then we have a battery, which is a 1320 milliamp hour battery. Quite large, uh, physically quite large battery and fairly weighty. In the other end, let's just pull all these pieces out. We have the user guide, uh, which covers all the uh, basics on uh, getting started and everything else of the handset. Then we have a USB to micro USB sync and charge cable, fairly typical item. And then we have a headset, which is a wired headset. So we have a four pole, three and a half mil jack on one end, length of cable, then an inline media control um, block here, which has a built in microphone and a clip for clipping it onto clothing. Then there's also, um, you can see this way around, play, pause, and track skip buttons. And on the other side, we have a push button for answering and hanging up telephone calls, and then an up and down volume control rocker. So that's a quite, quite well featured um, control there. Uh, then there's a bit more cable, and then the headphones themselves. And the headphones do look really quite decent. They are sort of in-ear style um, noise isolation um, headphones, and they do look, uh, they do really look, do look the part. So. Uh, we'll comment on how good they are. They also come with um, some additional um, earphone covers. So uh, obviously if your ears are of a slightly different size, you can change them over. So let's look at the handset then. And uh, firstly, let's peel off the screen protector on the front so we can see it a little more clearly. So on the front, we have a 3.2 inch display, which is actually 360 by 640 pixels. So um, it's a slightly more unusual resolution. Um, most are going for the 48800 or even the uh, 240 um, 400. But as I say, this is uh, 360 by 640, so it's kind of widescreen resolution. There is a forward facing uh, camera for taking, you know, for making your video calls or video conferencing. And below that we have a couple of buttons. These are actually physical buttons, which is, again, somewhat um, more unusual. Um, a lot of the handsets are now sort of going for touch screen or touch sensitive buttons at the bottom rather than physical buttons. But we do have physical um, keys for uh, answering and hanging up your calls and then a menu button in the center. Touring around the outside, we have a cover on the left hand side, which we can pop open. That pops in the side there and uh, we do have a couple of loudspeaker grills on either side so we can um, actually output the audio in stereo. On the bottom really not a great deal to see there is a tiny little hole for the microphone um, that is pretty much all there is to see and on the right hand side we have a dedicated camera button and a lock button which uh, that well effectively turns the screen on and off um, into kind of standby mode and then up and down volume control rocker on the top we do have the power button and we have two connectors so we have one for plugging in the power uh, for charging up and the other one is the three and a half mil headphone connector so we can use um, our own headphones if we want to or we can use the wired headset that come with it uh, but it also, also is AV capable so we can output um, to TV through an AV cable which you can purchase at an additional cost because it doesn't come with it. There also is a cover over the micro USB sync charge connector. Uh, we use that obviously for connecting up to the computer um, and I believe you can charge over it too when you actually are connecting via USB um, but we use that for um, transferring media to it and from the handset. does look like the uh, mechanism will slide, it isn't a slider it is just um, touch screen but uh, it kind of has that appearance on the bottom. On the back we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with uh, Carl Zeiss optics and dual LED flash. The LEDs can also be used um, to illuminate when you're taking um, video, recording video. 
they're not just uh, used for flash so that's uh, quite cool and again fairly unusual not many handsets do have that feature um, here we have uh, the space for our sim card and this is in actual fact the cover here is for our sim card and uh, not as I thought it's not for memory card the sim card actually goes in that space there and that is the little mechanism to actually slide the sim card out so it's kind of unusual to have the sim card um, accessible from the outside but um, that's what it is nevertheless you'll notice there is no memory card slot because this model does have 32 gig of internal memory so you can't supplement that with a uh, with a memory card um, which is uh, perhaps a bit of a shame but um, you know 32 gig of memory is probably a lot enough uh, probably is enough for most people anyway uh, let's just pop the battery in, uh, which goes in like so, filling up that space. Um, we also have a place here that we can actually connect a lanyard or a phone charm if we want to, and that just actually goes around that post there. And then the back cover pops back on like so. Fairly flimsy plastic back cover, has to be said. Uh, fairly thin, and it just kind of snaps into place. Um, I guess the fact that you're not going to be swapping memory cards in and out um, uh, the only time you're really going to take the back cover off is to access the battery and uh, in, in actual fact the white case design, not sure if it sort of uh, you know, comes out too well on the video is almost sort of um, pearlescent, it's not solid white so it's uh, slightly more interesting than just white so let's just power up and while we wait for that to come on let me just do a rundown of the specification for you uh, it is called bad for GSM so voice call is going to work almost everywhere in the world and uh, tri-band for HSDPA and 3G uh, so data will um, you will get data connectivity uh, in most countries uh, size wise 111 millimeters from top to bottom 51 millimeters wide and just under 14 millimeters thick it does weigh 122 grams um, which actually strangely feels quite heavy 122 grams on paper doesn't sound like a lot but uh, this does feel like a fairly weighty um, handset. As I've mentioned the 3.2 inch display is 360 by 640 pixels. So you have built-in Wi-Fi which supports 802.11b and G standards as well as Bluetooth 2 with A2DP support. There's also built-in GPS and that does support geotagging uh, coupled with the camera so you can tag your images with the location which is pretty cool. Battery according to spec is good for up to 401 hours of standby time and eight and a half hours of talk time and also interestingly uh, 35 hours of music playback which does sound quite good so let's just go ahead and set up the handset I'll turn the display back on so let's just go ahead and set this up and we'll set the region to UK the screen is capacitive so we don't touch it with our nail we actually touch it with our finger and scroll through and we'll scroll down to United Kingdom which is there and my nearest city is London, we'll just set that up. As you can see the display is extremely reflective and uh, obviously we're recording a fairly bright condition so you can see the handset properly but um, it is quite shiny the display and uh, obviously getting quite a bit of glare. Uh, you'll notice that there's an accelerometer so that when we rotate the display or when we rotate the device the display does rotate along with it but the display does actually turn off as it rotates and turns back on again. Uh, we'll just leave the date as is and we'll leave the time as is so that we can actually just start up and we'll start up in English I'll just wait for that I think we're choosing Nokia okay so we actually do have um, a slightly different um, arrangement to the screen than um, perhaps the standard Nokia devices that we're seeing or have seen over the last couple of weeks. Um, similar sort of icons and similar sort of idea but the arrangement of the home screen is somewhat different. So at the bottom we have that comes with music store, we have uh, messaging, email and SMS, then we have Nokia maps uh, for obviously navigation and the OV store. We can go into the telephone and again because it is capacitive touchscreen it's extremely sensitive so um, as I'm touching that it obviously is working very well requiring only the lightest of touch and um, every time I actually touch the display there's a tiny vibrate from inside just enough that you know that you actually have successfully keyed a, um, a button there so we can come back out there go into the contacts clearly obviously got no contacts because it's the first time we actually started up um, so we can set new contacts and so on we can come back out of there 
you notice that the buttons at the bottom have illuminated in color. Um, so we have green and red, and when the device is off or in standby, they are actually just white, so the illumination is from inside in color. So that's quite cool. Uh, we can go into the menu by pushing the button at the bottom, and it brings up the full menu of, uh, of the, the items inside. So we've got calendar and contacts, and this is all pretty standard stuff, and this is the sort of normal uh, arrangement for Nokia and the, the Symbian OS. So we can actually pick an item, and as you can see there, it's just following my finger around the display, and we can go into maps, for example, and it just flashes at the side to say that we are actually loading maps. That just takes a second to fire up. And we can accept that. And as I say, this has got 32 gig of uh, built-in memory, so we can use that for um, movies, uh, music, uh, and applications, pretty much anything we want. So that's quite cool, 32 gig will get us, um, I would think, quite far. And uh, it's telling me that we can't actually pick up a network connection here at the moment, which uh, is obviously because I don't have a SIM card, nor have I actually set up a Wi-Fi. But the Nokia maps load, as you can see there, and it does want to work in landscape rather than portrait mode, which is uh, kind of cool. Go back to the home screen. Uh, there's also a button at the top here, touch sensitive area at the top, which we can tap. That just as it does actually bring up the media controls that you can see here. So we've got music and photos. I um, don't know what the middle one is. I guess that's the OV store. Um, yeah, it wants to go online. Um, we're going to say no to that right now because uh, we don't have any connectivity. We can set up email from the home screen here as well. And uh, the other thing is video and internet. And we we'll go back into the main menu. And display has already rotated. Let's rotate it back. There we go. We've got various other applications and settings. Uh, settings, obviously, where we can set up things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and so on, and change display functionality and other bits and pieces like that. And we have also other applications that we can look into. So we have all of our other applications in here, including camera. So we'll just pop into the camera. Launch camera application. Let's just yeah, pop these in front here. We can actually just take a quick shot using the button there. And nothing terribly exciting, but the camera application isn't too bad, it's pretty standard, and uh, the image quality again isn't bad. When we come to the full review, we'll have some proper you know, shots for you of um, things other than a cable sitting on the table there, but we'll have some uh, shots using the flash and also shots um, you know, in daylight and so on, so you can just get the idea. Uh, Notice here we also have Real Player. And uh, we have various other things on here. We have a gallery, and this actually is, uh, allows us to look at our images and video, songs, and sound clips, and other bits and pieces. So, quite cool features on there. Say, so, lots of the bits and pieces, here, certainly within the menu, are pretty standard. So, if you've seen Nokia devices before, you're going to recognize um, these icons and you know, the menu arrangements. Uh, it is the home screen that's sort of somewhat slightly different to some of the other Nokia devices. So this is the new Nokia X6, going to have a full review on tracyandmap.co.uk over the next couple of weeks for you. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. On Twitter we are Tracy and Matt. And on Facebook we have a fan page which is tracyandmap.co.uk. Definitely worth uh, following us on Twitter or Facebook because we are running a pretty good competition at the moment where you can, you can win the excellent Motorola Milestone. So definitely worth entering the competition there. You can do that through Twitter or Facebook. If you've missed any of those details, just check out the intro page of this video which has all the URLs you could need. And as I say, the full review of the Nokia X6 will be on tracyandmap.co.uk over the next couple of weeks.